Okay, so what we're gonna do now is put this on top of it, same way we did with the layout and the penciling, and I'm gonna ink this with markers. What we're gonna do now is to establish the frames, and uh, it's a good idea to use a, a thicker marker. You know, I mean, it depends on what you wanna tell with the frame too. Sometimes you wanna use um, a thinner line or a broken line <clears throat> because depending on the on the emotional content that you want to communicate on any given frame um, but in general when you do just standard frames um, it's a good way to to separate one image from the next um, then we proceed to inking I think uh, I think I talked about a little bit about the type of um, markers that I use. These are pilot uh, markers, um, are very good, very nice flow of ink. Uh, they're Japanese. And, uh, you know, these days that's what I'm using mostly. Back in the day, I use uh, crow quills, and uh, who knows, I might use that again sometime. Depending on the style, it's a good opportunity to put textures. You know, if you're working in black and white, meaning it's gonna be printed in black and white, it's an excellent opportunity to put textures. So we are working, it doesn't matter where you start really. Um, once you have a, a solid pencil underneath that you don't have to worry about drawing. And instead of uh, line quality, you can start anywhere. Um, that's another thing I would suggest is to, you know, perfect your drawing as much as possible. I remember that Neil Adams taught me that. Um, you work on the pencil as much as you can so then when you proceed to ink, you don't have to worry about drawing, but instead of embellishing and line quality. So here we uh, started with the face of one of the pilots. Um, some of the lines you see, and you'll see this later again, some of the lines you see um, on, the, on the structure um, are following the form. And that's something that uh, car designers do a lot when you see the car design um, sketches or illustrations. Uh, you follow the form across the form because that, that establishes um, the form in a little in a better way. Um, later we'll see that this again and I'll, I'll point it out so it's more clear. But it's an important thing particularly when one is working with black and white because I mean until later um, that we have value with color uh, that's all we have you know so it helps it helps to define the drawing basically. Um, you can work, work with different, uh, different um, markers and different uh, thickness. You can work with some that are a little thinner depending on, on the detail that you want to apply or uh, you can use thicker ones. I usually, these markers usually come in uh, 0, 3, 0, 4 and 0, 5. And uh, I found myself more often than not using the 0, 5 for almost everything. Um, the 03, you use it when it's like really, really tiny stuff. Like if you want to do some detail on the eyes or some uh, tech, tech stuff, you know, it's good for that. Um, but uh, sometimes can be a little difficult. And this, this 03 tend to, to break down really easy. So um, the 05 is a good option. You know, some people might say that, you know, it's crazy. 05 is really thin, but you know, once, once you get into it, you, you get really picky sometimes. Um, you can put some blacks, you know, usually I leave that for the very end to do it with a thicker marker so it will faster. But, you know, whenever you get the chance to, to speed up the process and if it doesn't get on the way, you can, you can do it. Um, you'll notice also that here um, I'm putting a little bit of a crosshatch here and there. Uh, again, you, you don't have a hell lot of value. Basically, in, in black and white art, you're dealing with two values unless you're using um, Zipatone. And, uh, you know, cross-hatching always is a good way to, to define, define the form and um, define shapes. These curvilinear lines, um, you, years ago, I would probably would have used a stencil 
one thing that you'll notice is that the the more you do these, the more even you, even you know with stencil, the more the more you use them, the more confident you'll get to just doing by freehand, and ultimately that's the goal, you know, because when when you do that, the drawing is more alive. This, this is the front section, it's, you know, the, the circular shapes that I'm working on here that are larger. And, uh, you know, it's very practical and very useful to use stencils, you know, because it gives it a look, it gives it a, a specific aesthetic, but also it speeds up the process. You probably see many occasions where I, I repeat the line. What I'm doing here with the repeated line is an attempt to, um, to emulate that. Distortion close to the edge of the glass of the cockpit. This is just um, establishing a little bit of texture on the handlebar. Uh, you probably saw many times in um, a surgical equipment that they have these corrugated um, texture that it basically it's, it's, uh, it's not just for decoration. It's so you can get a, a better grip. There uh, you can see I work a little bit in the, in the smoke. It's a good, it's a good habit not to work like a printer. I think it's a good thing to to work over in, in the overall picture, not to concentrate on, let's say, just the arm, just the hand, and then the forearm, and then the bicep, and so forth, you know? Uh, because by working in, in overall picture, like maybe the hand here, and maybe the smoke that is on the other corner of the frame, um, you can control the image better. You can, you for example, in this case, you, you get a, a better notion on where to put uh, straight lines and where to do more organic lines, so you can get a better balance within the frame. Design 101, basically, you know, where, where you use um, straight, edgy lines for aggressive stuff, round lines for friendly stuff, and square lines for uh, reliable uh, stuff. You can apply that either to objects or to characters or whatever you design. Working on the face of the guy, and uh, here you want to slow down a little bit. Uh, it's very important to to get the faces um, the faces right. You know, whenever you have that element uh, within a frame, a little bit of uh, light also indication. Light is coming from the from the controls in the cockpit, so it comes from the bottom of his face, makes the whole situation a little more somber, more menacing. And again, it adds to the story that you're trying to tell. You know, you're, you're telling a story with, with, uh, in the page, but you're telling the story within each frame also. And the more emotional uh, content that you can apply, the, the more interesting the whole thing is going to be. Forget to break the line here and there whenever you get the chance. That on the side that I'm doing right now, it's a little bit of those um, stickers that you see sometimes on the on the uh, seats on the fighter jets. Never be afraid of getting reference. I always mentioned before that there's not such a thing as too much reference. You know, the more reference you get, uh, the more that the image is gonna uh, resonate uh, through through the um, viewer. You can see you can see here uh, that the the gun the, the lines of the gun stop right where the glass edge cuts. You know that's what I was trying to to uh, talk about, refer to earlier when I said about the distortion when things are looked through a glass. Uh, here I'm using the stencil again. These are um, ra rather um, long lines. The the jet fighter. Um, wings. I like to use the stencils um, when the lines have that length because it makes the whole thing more solid. In my head, let's put it this way, in my head it's easier for me to believe that the thing exists and that's a good thing for you to do. If, if you're gonna draw something, first it has to exist on your head. Once that happens, um, 
there's a higher probability that then the viewer will believe in it also. Another thing I just did there was to get off the frame. It makes the whole page more interesting and more um, explosive, you know. If you want to either add or subtract detail, um, that's, that's part of the inking process too. It's almost like you're editing, you know. If, if you compare that with a, with a movie process, for example, the movie gets done three times. When it's written, when it's shot, and when it's edited. And um, this, in a way, is the same deal. You're editing, basically. And uh, again, it's related to what I mentioned before about, you know, the more you have your pencil done, uh, the more you can concentrate on that editing. The face of the second pilot that is on the, on the side of the airplane, it's a little um, simplified, again, because it's far away. So obviously you won't have the same amount of detail that the one that is on the fore foreground has, you know. Uh, you, can, you can add detail wherever you think it's necessary, add textures, um, and in some other parts, you know, that, you know, later you think that you can get rid of stuff, you can do so. There's a little bit of texture. The thing with texture is that, um, you know, it's interesting not to have it all over the place, otherwise, uh, the whole thing will become clutter. You want to do a little bit of a duck, 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 goose thing, you know, so you can have a balance between straight lines, clean lines, open lines, and, and texture. Here again, it's a part of the, part of the machinery, so the lines are straighter, more geometric. And again, you know, I, 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 uh, I like to stress this. Whenever you do uh, images or part of the images that are uh, far away within the frame, uh, you want to simplify it because that, that creates instant uh, depth of field. We're working on geometric stuff. These are the exhaust uh, pipes or, you know, the afterburn uh, structures of the jet. And, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you notice these lines a lot, those repeated lines on the afterburn um, structures. I don't know exactly the technical name, but if you look at the, at the rockets, you'll see those, those lines that repeat, you know, within the structure. My idea was to mix a little bit of, of uh, technology that you see in a standard uh, jet fighter and, and something like the space shuttle. And uh, for that, it's nice to use a stencil because it gives you a nice repeated even pattern. When your pen is making contact with the paper, there's always a little bit of, of residual ink that spreads. The stencil either sticks flat on the surface of the paper or if you put it on the other side, you'll see that there's a little bit of space. You use the other side so you don't smudge the page. Or you can get used to, to lay the uh, pen, the pen point in an angle so you know the, the tip of the pen will not touch or will not have a chance to touch the, the edge of the stencil. And I know that this is a little, little bit technical, you know, but trust me, once you ruin a couple of images, you, you, uh, you'll appreciate that. I'm establishing the vents on the front of the, of the cannon. And, um, you know, you can establish volume, particularly on the edge of objects, by doing thicker and thinner straight lines. If you look at the edge of that, or at the uh, uh, front part of, the, of that double barrel cannon, um, you'll see that you can establish the volume by, you know, doing thicker and thinner lines, but also you can establish, you see, you'll see that the cannon has um, these vents that you see in all cannons, you know, that you rarely see that in machine guns these days, but uh, back in the old day, the, the machine guns, uh, I think there was a, a mall in World War II, that uh, American mall that had that system, uh, had those vents. And you can establish that, but actually not drawing anything. You can leave empty white space, and it's a good way to establish volume as well. 
And you see there uh, on the middle frame, there's a lot of organic lines versus uh, straight lines. And so you are fight between good and evil if you want to get uh, deep into the whole thing. So we're working on the kit here. Some uh, sneaker action there. You see that um, cross hatching that I'm doing right now? I learned that from, from the uh, Italian artist Milo Manara. It's a very effective way to establish texture, very economic way and yet effective. Working on the house, the house definitely we, uh, will save us a lot of time and problems just grabbing a good old ruler. Um, we do a little bit of the repeated line at the edges just to establish uh, in and out lines, volume. Uh, we want to make it a little thicker there where mom is just to center the attention. Um, again, we work in different elements within the picture. So we jump to the we jump to the astronaut that all of a sudden we see that he was a toy. And the imagination of this kid. Put some texture in the visor. Now working on the other one, a little more organic shapes on the trees in the back, uh, a little bit of texture on the leaves, just uh, an outline. And I remember the tree is in the background anyway, so you know the more economical, the better. Have some grass. Um, and again, I know that it might seem like a contradiction because I like to do detail work, you know, in in every sense. I like the detail, I like the textures, uh, but. A thing that I learned throughout the years is that you don't need to clutter the page. You know, you can imply detail with very little stuff, you know, and, uh, and therefore you make the, the reader a lot more participant. And you do, you know, a couple of things here and there. Guess what? The rest happens on the viewer's mind. And there is, therefore it's more enticing for the person to, to, to submerge into the story. And now we're going to uh, one of the things that is the most fun. I'm using markers as a way to add balance to the whole thing, you know? It's like by adding thicker blocks in strategic places with, within each frame, you, you help uh, balance the frame and therefore the page. It's like, you know, the same technique, I guess, that they use in photography when they use negative and positive space. There, for example, in the computer controls, um, you might want to give the impression that, you know, the lights are happening randomly, but they're not. You, you are doing that in a very controlled way. It helps to read the thing better. I, I'm adding blacks also to increase the contrast in, within the picture. Since while doing black and white, if, if I had any way to add a gray tone to this or more than one value, uh, I would probably use less black, but since I just have black and white here, you know, you have to make the most out of it. Also, you know, I mean, it's not technically related, but it's a, it's a nice thing to put the blacks is when you know basically you're almost done with the page and it gives you a nice sense of uh, accomplishment, you know. Uh, I remember a few years back that somebody was trying to help me with the, with the blacks, filling up the blacks and I said, no, are you crazy? I mean, that's, that's a fun part. I like to do that myself. That's it, that's your page.